voluntary charity. When Allah made zakah obligatory on the Muslims and stated how much it should be, He also opened a wide door of righteousness when He introduced voluntary charity, which is given as a means of getting closer to Allah the Most High in ways other than what is obligatory. Voluntary charity is recommended at all times, especially when needed, and we have been encouraged to give charity in the Book of Allah, as He says, Who is He? that will lend to Allah a goodly loan, so that he may multiply it to him many times. And also the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him said, Whoever spends in charity the equivalent of a date from pure earnings, and Allah accepts only that which is pure, Allah will accept it with his right hand, and nurture it for its owner, as any of you nurtures his foal. And a foal is the offspring of a horse, until it becomes like a mountain. The Prophet peace be upon him also counted the person who gives alms in secret to be among the seven that Allah will cover with his shade on the day when there will be no shade except his shade and a man that gives alms and makes the secret to the extent that his left hand knows not what his right hand has spent. He also said and alms extinguishes bad deeds just as water extinguishes fire. It is encouraged for a Muslim to give alms to those he is not obliged to cater for among his relatives who need it, for example, paternal and maternal uncles, a wife giving to her poor husband, etc. This is better than giving to people other than them. Allah the Most High says, to an orphan near of kin. And in a hadith, indeed giving alms to the needy is rewarded and to a relative, a double reward is taken, one for giving alms and the other for strengthening the bond of kinship. It is also obligatory for a Muslim to give from his wealth that which is lawful, pure, and that which he desires for himself. Allah the Most High says, By no means shall you attain al-bir, that is piety and righteousness, unless you spend in Allah's cause of that which you love. Similarly, it is a practice of the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him to give the charity secretly without anybody seeing his giving, because of that being closer to having a pure intention and farther from showing off or seeking a good reputation and it is more honorable for the poor person. Allah says, if you disclose your sadaqat, it is well. But if you conceal it and give it to the poor, that is better for you. But when a benefit is expected by giving alms in the open, for example, to serve as an example and a way to encourage those present to do the same, it is then encouraged to give the alms in this way. But a Muslim must be aware of his intention and monitor it. Zakah is a way to purify the soul. Allah the Most High says, Take sadaqah meaning alms, from their wealth in order to purify them and sanctify them with it. Similarly, it is a way to follow the example of our leader, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, who used to say to Bilal, spend, O Bilal, and fear not. And Allah replaces for the giver whatever he spends. Allah the Most High says regarding this, and whatever you spend of anything in Allah's cause, he will replace it. The Prophet peace be upon him said, O oh, you traders, indeed erroneous speech and swearing do accompany trade, so neutralize it by giving alms. One of the benefits gained from giving charity is that it is a way of being rewarded and of having one's sins expiated. The Prophet peace and blessings be upon him said, Whoever gives in charity the equivalent of a date from pure earnings and Allah accepts only that which is pure, Allah will accept it from him with his right hand and nurture it for his owner as any of you will nurture a foal until it becomes like a mountain. And as the best of the prophets and the most generous of people, peace and blessings be upon him, said, whenever a man dies, his deeds are cut from him except these three. A continuous charity, beneficial knowledge that is being benefited from and a pious child that continues to pray for him.